the Kimball method slowly changing dimension component. How do I use this thing? Before we start setting up an SCD wizard, we're going to have to set up our database. So we'll execute this container, which will create our database, create our tables, and get everything filled and ready to go. So to give you somewhere to start off from, we're going to put a slowly changing dimension wizard on the surface and configure that up so we can compare that to how the other techniques work and how you're eventually going to hook up the Kimball method SCD. So the first thing we do is drop an SCD wizard on the surface, pick our database that we're going to hit, and pick the table. Then we're going to have to identify the business keys. So these are the items that are going to uniquely identify a row according to the source system. So we're going to pick the manufacturer, the model, and the serial number. The next step is to identify to the wizard how those columns participate in processing. So we've got three choices here, a fixed attribute which should never change, a changing attribute which is type 1 in the Kimball method, and a historical attribute which is a type 2. So the first three attributes are historical attributes, we care how those change over time, and the next three are changing attributes which we're going to retroactively change in history. On this page we're going to tell the wizard we want all changes applied retroactively to all versions. Then we're going to tell the wizard how to identify the current record. We're going to do that with two date fields. Then we have to tell the wizard what date to use when we're expiring and creating new versions of rows. We don't care about inferred member support at this time, and then we'll just finish up the wizard. The wizard creates a whole bunch of components on the design surface, so let's take a look at what those do. The key component here is the slowly changing dimension. It's basically a lookup, going to the dimension table in the database, and finding the rows by business key. It's going to then classify them as having attributes that have changed, or historical attributes that have changed, no change at all, or brand new rows have been detected. Rows that have SCD1 changes will go out this output to this OLADB command. What this is going to do is update values based on the business key. You take a look at the update statement here, pretty simple, just updating by business key. The second output is for brand new rows. These are rows where it was unable to find a business key. And it's going to shove those straight down this flow into a union all that's eventually going to get inserted into the database. The last output of the, the SCD is going to handle type 2 changes. So it's got to do two things here, retire old rows and add new ones. In order to do that, it's got to add an expiry date and then it's going to do an OLADB command to update the existing rows with that expiry date. The last thing that needs to happen is that new rows and new versions of rows need to be inserted into the database. Those are union together, and then we're going to have to put a, an effective date on those, which is done in this derived column component. And the last thing to do is to insert them directly into the destination. And you'll see in the mappings here, we're leaving the expiry date empty so that we'll get a null value because it defaults to null. When we execute this, you'll see that three rows come out of our source system flat file, one of which gets routed to the changing attributes or type 1 output. Nothing gets put through the new output because we don't have any new computers in our source system. And one gets routed to the changing attributes or type 2 output in order to get the old version retired and the new version inserted into the database. Now we can make sure that the SCD wizard did the right thing, so we'll run the last container which will first show us results and then clean up after us. We can see that we've got a new row created, number 5, and that it's got the new version of the operating system and has fixed up the purchase by name as well. That's how you set up the wizard to process your dimensions. Now it's time for you to watch the next video where I show you how to create your own custom dimension processing using existing components.